Yesterday's action in Congress continued in yet another hearing, but this time not on nukes, but rather on the uh, proliferation of an even more disturbing weapon, their own dicks. <laughs> because, you see, sexual harassment is not just for Hollywood and Alabama malls, as one Virginia congresswoman explained. Republican Barbara Comstock in graphic detail telling one former Here, staffer's story about a current member of Congress left unnamed. This member asked a staffer to bring them over some materials to their residence. And the young staffer, is a young woman, went there and was greeted with a member in a towel, who was a male, who then invited her in. Um, at that point, he decided to expose himself. Really? The towel again? Did everyone go to the same Harvey Weinstein school of sexual harassment? <laughs> everyone does the same things? Like, well, the key is uh, to work with terry cloth. That's the main thing. And uh, then gravity. Like, who the hell was it? Like, I want, I want to know. I don't know about you, but I want to know which lawmaker it was. I know it wasn't Mitch McConnell, because if he was trying to expose himself, he couldn't just drop a towel. Like, he'd then have to roll up his neck skin and just be like, <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ba -da. <laughs> And if, if you're mad that lawmakers are sexually harassing their coworkers, wait until you find out who's paying for it. Settlements, when they happen, are paid not by members or their offices, but by a special U.S. Treasury fund. According to the Office of Compliance, $15 million in taxpayer money has been paid to settle harassment and discrimination claims. $15 million in taxpayer money. It's amazing how, with all the things Congress apparently can't find money for, there's still plenty of cash to pay for their sexual harassment. I always feel like America should make a simple rule for Congress. If you're gonna take your dick out of your pants, you should take the money out of your pants as well. <laughs> simple rule. Dick out, money out. It's simple. And, and it gets worse. Not only is sexual harassment all too common in Congress, Congressional rules make it rarely hard for victims to even report it. Like, I'm talking incredibly hard. Here's what you have to do if you are a legislative branch employee who wants to file a formal sexual harassment complaint. And this is actual federal law. First, you have to go through 30 days of mandatory counseling. Yeah, counseling for you, the accuser, you know, so you can think about what you didn't do. <laughs> then you have to do a month of mediation. Right? And if you still feel like suing your harasser, well, then there's another 30-day cooling-off period. Yeah, because you're so mad about all of the counseling and mediation that they just made you go through. <laughs> and then after all of that, then you can file the complaint. Unless, unless that other process, all of that bureaucratic bull took more than 180 days. In which case, you're too late. Yeah, too late. Can you imagine that happening after any other crime? It's like someone like, help, help, officer, my car was just stolen. All right, sir, all right, all right. Come back in the spring and we'll start looking for it. <laughs> but don't wait too long or it doesn't count. Okay, bye-bye now. And by the way, uh, even if you are able to file a complaint, none of your colleagues are able to speak on your behalf. Yes, because I guess as Congressional Code Title II Part 13 says, snitches get stitches. <laughs> Like, this process is so complicated and demoralizing. Even the HR department at Fox News would probably be like, you guys have no respect for women. <laughs> like, nothing <laughs> at all.